Good morning, Grace. Good morning. It is indeed a blessing and a joy to see you here on this beautiful Sunday the Lord has given us. Well, this is my first uh, snowy Iowa day. Uh-huh, yes, I know. Actually, it's not. Um, I, uh, the day that Kate and I were here to be introduced to the Staff Parish Committee back in March, it snowed. So I guess technically that's the first one, but this was the first one where I'm living here. And I'm going to tell you, it's, uh, it was very, very beautiful to watch outside and to go out and, and enjoy it yesterday. It was great. I've been told that you have something here called a blizzard and that it's not exactly the same thing as that ice cream treat over at Dairy Queen. Some of these, one of these days, I guess I'll get to see that too, but this was lovely and beautiful outside. So it's good having you here. If you're joining us on live stream today. Welcome to Grace United Methodist Church. It's good to have you with us uh, on live stream as well. And if you're watching next week from um, uh, Wesley on Grand, hello next week. Uh, I'm Dr. Greg Neal, pastor of the congregation. It's good to have you here for worship today. There are several announcements to take note of. If you'll check in your worship bulletin, you'll see them today. Immediately after worship, we're having the hanging of the greens. That means that we'll be decorating the sanctuary in our building here for Christmas, for Advent and Christmas. We'll have goodies downstairs to eat, some soup, some uh, uh, other types of refreshments. So come downstairs after worship, get some refreshments, and then we will be decorating our wonderful worship space and the church for Advent and for Christmas. We have youth on Sunday evenings at 5 p.m. Next Sunday at 2 p.m., we have the sing-along concert for the Messiah, which will be right here next Sunday at 2 p.m. At 1 p.m., there will be an um, uh, introduction to it, a, a talk about it at 1 p.m. next Sunday, the pre-concert talk, and then the concert itself will be at 2 and of course, next Sunday as well, the Crafters Bazaar before and after our morning worship and then before and I guess after the Messiah sing-along. So come uh, for that as well. Other announcements to make. Uh, the Advent series, the Advent study this year is being led by Bishop Kenitha online. So if you have your red doors, you can check it. This coming Tuesday it begins and for also the um, 5th, the 12th, and the 19th. So for four Tuesday evenings at 7 p.m. on Zoom, you can register for that in the email on, um, from the red doors or just uh, speak to myself or Cade after worship and we can tell you how to register for that. Um, but I want to encourage you, there, there is a book that goes along with it, Unrelenting Grace by Bishop Carter, and you're invited to pick one of those up in the church office if we still have some. And uh, you can also make a donation of $7 per book if you would like to do that. Okay, other announcements. We have several. There's uh, uh, the fellowship time. We are still looking for volunteers to help us serve coffee and treats during this special time after worship most Sundays. For more information or to volunteer, kindly reach out to the church office, and the email there is in your bulletin. Skip Phillips has also asked me to announce that the small house, uh, our rent house that's next door to the parsonage, uh, is ready now for painting. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, they're looking for volunteers to come and help paint the inside of the house, and they also need brushes and or rollers to help with that. So that's from Skip Phillips through the trustees. Also in your bulletin, you'll see that there is a poinsettia order form. These are due... Um, Monday, December the 4th, so you have another week to get your poinsettia order uh, in for Advent and for Christmas. Are there other announcements that need to be made today? Any other announcements? If not, let us move into our time of worship with our call to worship. Please Please stand as you are able and join me in the call to worship. With prayers of thanksgiving and songs of praise, we proclaim the glory of God our Creator. With words of peace and deeds of love, we proclaim the glory of God our Redeemer. With hope and faith, with forgiveness and reconciliation, 
we proclaim, proclaim the glory of God, God our sustainer. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. Blessed, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks and praise for this day, for calling us into worship, for opening us by the power of your Holy Spirit to hear and receive what you say and how you call us to live and serve and be your people following Jesus in this world. Be with us this day in worship. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. I invite you to remain standing as you are able and join together in singing number 327, Crown Him with Many Crowns, number 327 and on the screen. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Psalm, chapter 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. 
His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Do we have any young friends, any children in the congregation this morning? You can do, come down and as we sing, tell me the stories of Jesus. Today, the children's message is from the Congregation of the Whole. Okay, y'all know what Simon says? Oh, come on down. Do y'all know what Simon says is? It's a game. I used to love and hate playing it at the same time because I always messed up. Well, today we're going to play Jesus Says. It's going to be with the whole congregation. Come on down. Be right over here. Okay, you can have a seat. We're going to play this with the whole congregation. When I says Jesus says, you do whatever I tell you to do, okay? And if I don't say Jesus says before I tell you what to do, you don't do it, okay? Let's try that. Jesus says, stand up if you can. Very good. <laughs> Jesus says, raise a hand. Put it down. Jesus didn't say put it down. Okay, Jesus says put it down. Jesus says shake the hand of the person next to you. Hello? 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 Okay. Jesus says pat the shoulder of another person near you. There you go. All right, give the next person next to you a hug. Jesus didn't say give the person next to you a hug. Now, Jesus says give the person next to you a hug. There you go. Yes. Jesus says hop up and down once. Hop up and down again. Again. Ha, ah, you got it right. You didn't do it. Jesus says, sit down. Jesus says, amen. amen. Jesus says, amen. 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 Ah, ha, ha, got it. Yes. <laughs> and Jesus says, amen. amen. Following Jesus is what we're all called to do. Living the life that Jesus has for us is how we're all called to live. When Jesus calls us to act or do, we should do it. And you know what? Sometimes we're told by others to do something and it may be good like giving a hug, but we need to be careful to make sure that that hug, for example, is welcome. And when Jesus calls us to serve and to give, we should serve and we should give. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you and we love you. Thank you for calling us. Thank you for giving us a wonderful understanding of the life we're called to live, a life sharing love with others. Thank you for saying, Jesus, that we are called to love our neighbor as ourselves, and to love God with all of our being. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you very much for coming up, and thank all of you too. Our hymn is number 177, He is Lord. You may remain seated as we sing.
Our New Testament reading today is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may perceive what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body. The fullness of him who fills all in all. Holy wisdom, holy word. Would you pray with me? Lord God Almighty, move among us this day so that we, your people, may always feel and sense your divine power and presence. For we need to know that we are never alone. And speak to us this day in such a way that we may always hear, understand, and remember. Give us your word by which you mold and shape our living. For we need your word to live eternally. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. A game of Simon Says, or as we played it today in the children's time, Jesus Says, is a simple way of illustrating authority. If Jesus says go, you go. If Jesus says stand, you stand, if you can. If Jesus says hug, you hug. And if Jesus says give, you give. Authority and power. That word power in Greek is an important one. It's the word dunamis, and it means having the potential for functioning in some way. Might, strength, force, capability, power. We get the word dynamite from the Greek word dunamis, which is also very interesting. Explosive, forceful, influential, abrupt, instantaneous, not to be argued with, not to be obstructed or ignored. That's authority. The apostle writes, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power? Knowing what is the hope to which God has called us. The riches of God's glorious inheritance among the saints. The immeasurable, I love these words, the immeasurable greatness of God's power for and within us. Hope is often misunderstood. Hope and faith are actually closely synonymous 
in the Christian religious context. Hope translates the Greek word elpis. Faith translates the Greek word pistis. Now, you hear in the, both of those words, elpis, pistis, you hear the same Greek root. It's a common root between those two words, expressing a related idea, an idea that you see even in the book of Hebrews where it says faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hope and faith are two sides of the same coin, two aspects of the same thing. Hope is a condition generated by faith, and faith is that to which hope looks for fulfillment. Our hope is in Christ's love, in Christ's presence, and in Christ's power for and within us. God put this power to work in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at His right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. Our faith and hope are not nebulous and undefined. Sometimes it sounds like they are, but, but they're not. Our faith and our hope are specifically placed in that very amazing grace of God that raised Jesus from the dead, the resurrection power, the life-bringing, life-transforming, life-establishing, life-renewing presence and power of God. A life-giving power which Jesus shares with us, which like the tide coming in through a harbor, raises all the boats from the smallest little dinghy to the greatest cruise ship, freighter, and tanker. When I was a little kid, this was always fascinating for me to watch. Down on the Gulf of Mexico, we'd be getting ready to go out on a fishing expedition out into the Gulf, and I wasn't looking forward to it because I got seasick. But, but we would wait, and we could see the tide coming in, and we could see all the boats there being raised by the same tide coming in. Little ones and big ones it didn't matter. They were all raised by that tide. The idea of Christ's resurrection power is similar in that it raises us all. It can raise us all to life here and now. It's not just about the hereafter. It's about the here now. As an adult, I really need that power. As a kid, I was amazed by watching the power of the tide lifting the boats, and I was amazed by the power of God's grace in the life of my family and friends and church. As an adult, I really need that power. I get tired sometimes doing the simplest things. I get exhausted. I recently had COVID. And the experience of the deep weariness that followed having COVID was instructive on how powerless we can be. No energy, no stamina, no vroom. It took several weeks for me to begin to recover, to regain my strength, to get the vroom back in me. Indeed, a full month later, and it's not all the way back, though it is much better. That vroom, that zooming power is in a very small way analogous to Christ's power, to Christ's dunamis, to Christ's authority. When you don't have it, you know it. When you don't have it, you need it. And you can't pull it up out of yourself you can try pulling yourself up by your own bootstraps. That doesn't work very well. It simply has to come as a gift from God and from our neighbors.
The amazing thing is that it does come. It is a gift. God gives the spiritual vroom through the many means of grace. When I'm spiritually worn out, exhausted, lacking in any measure of energy or power, I can partake of the means of grace and feel a bit of that vroom flow back into me like a rising tide. Prayer is a very important means of grace for me. Being in prayer, it it doesn't matter what I say. In fact, it's better usually if I say nothing at all. I, I have friends, pastor friends, who are very eloquent in their praying. And you ask them to pray, and they'll pray, and they'll pray, and they'll pray, and they'll pray up a storm. Me? Greg, can you please say grace? <laughs> Almighty God, bless this food to the nourishment of our bodies and our bodies to your service. In Jesus' name, amen. And done. <laughs> God knows. I have friends who like to tell God how wonderful and majestic and powerful God is. God knows. Being in prayer for me is often about being still, being quiet, keeping this thing right here zipped, and listening for that still, small voice of God. And the birds outside, and the dog barking, and our child playing in a playground, and the tears of a friend of the loss of a sibling, Hearing that still, small voice of God speaking to me quietly from Scripture, quietly from the prayers of the church. Prayer is a powerful means of grace for me that gives me the room to get up and go. Fellowship, being around y'all, gives me a room every time charges my soul, excites me, enables me, gives me the power that I need to live a life and be in ministry to serve the Lord. Study, teaching, preaching, few things charge me up, give me more of a vroom than gathering with a bunch of folk and teaching. I love learning. I, I love teaching. I love leading studies. I love preaching. I love all of these things, and they give me a charge when I get to do them. Singing is a powerful means of grace for me. I love to sing. I'm not a professional singer, I'm like my husband, but I love to sing. And when I sing the songs of the faith, I feel a vroom come into me, especially in worship, giving, being present with and sharing with others the wonderful gifts that I have received, the blessings of family and the things, money, time, talents, gifts, energy, sharing, giving is a powerful means of grace. There are more, but these means of grace are instruments through which we not only receive God's power, God's love, and God's presence, but we also then share them with others. Yes, all of these means of grace can feed us. It can lift the tide of our lives and bring Christ's great power, God's vroom, back into us. And that's the point of Christ the King Sunday or the Reign of Christ Sunday. The last Sunday of the liturgical church year. That's today. Next Sunday, we begin Advent, a time of looking forward to the return of Christ by looking backwards to His foretold coming and birth. Next Sunday is the beginning of another church year, a cycle of Sundays taking us through the entire expression of the Christian faith, from Christ's coming to Christ's revelation to Christ's self-giving love in His ministry, His teachings, His sacrifice, His death, His resurrection, His ascension, 
His continued real presence through the power of the Holy Spirit and reign in our lives. This Sunday, we bring this entire cycle to a close by looking back and thanking God for calling us to follow Jesus. The apostle writes, I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. The apostle says this to the church, and that means the apostle says it to us and for us today. We have followed Jesus. This church has followed Jesus for more than a century, living faith and hope, and love, sharing faith and hope and love, giving faith and hope and love, following Jesus, His teachings, His way of life, His resurrection power, His grace. And for that, we give thanks. We give thanks for the great privilege of following Jesus and Jesus' way of love. Kate and I followed Jesus when we came here to serve among you as your pastoral family. We received great grace as you shared your love and acceptance with us. You're following Jesus with us. And we thank you for that and look forward to so much more to come following Jesus by giving a cup of water and a plate of food, a roll of toilet paper and a warm winter jacket, providing a place for sound medical care and safe, competent medical care, mental care, following Jesus by caring for the environment, for the stranger, for immigrants to our society, and for those on the margins, being open and affirming to LGBTQ folk, those who are so often pushed out of the church. Here, we have been welcomed into leadership by the church, and for that I give you personal thanks. We are following Jesus through providing spiritual counsel, invigorating worship, opportunities for intellectual and emotional growth, spiritual formation, and transformation. Following Jesus, we share all of these and more. They are the expressions of the reign of Christ among us. They are the realm of Christ's kingship. They are the embodiment of Jesus' authority, Jesus' rulership. They are where Jesus says, and we do. They show us God's power, not one of ruthless might, not one of worldly force or violence, not through threats of these either, but through love, through acceptance, affirmation, transformation, through love. God calls us to follow Jesus and sharing love, the love of God with all, so that the tide of God's grace can raise up all of us, can raise us up and carry us forward. May God's grace and power which raised Christ Jesus from the dead, bring us also to true life, true hope, true faith, and true joy. And as we close out this church here, giving thanks for the privilege of following Christ, may we look forward next Sunday to the beginning of a new church year and a new opportunity to witness to the coming of Christ, to witness to the coming of the love of God, not just in a little baby baby in Bethlehem of Judea, 
but in the lives that we live here and now, sharing the love of God we have received, sharing the love of God that lifts our tide and carries us onward. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And may God's people say, Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able for our affirmation of faith. The Statement of Faith of the United Church of Canada, 883 in your hymn book, the We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you into a time of prayer with me. A time when we will listen and open ourselves to God's grace, to God's power. Let us pray. Holy Creator, we open our hearts to you today. There are many needs, many concerns, many fears, many hopes, many dreams, many pains in our midst. And so we come to you in the silence of our hearts to be open to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those near and dear to us, for those who are struggling through difficult times with many needs. We pray for those in our family, our church family, who are hurting today due to the loss of loved ones, siblings, other family members. We ask your healing touch, the power of your grace. Be with them and with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation in a time of difficulty. We pray for our leaders, those we elected to serve in public office. We pray for those in the first responders who keep us safe and tend to ill and to hurt. And we pray for the last responders, those who soothe and comfort and help those who remain. We pray, Almighty God, that you would give wisdom to those who lead, guidance to those who serve, and always your grace to heal a land that needs your justice and righteousness and presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world, for those around it, especially those who are living in the midst of war and conflict, we pray, Almighty God, for peace, 
peace in Israel and Palestine, peace in Ukraine, peace in Africa. We pray for peace, a peace that the world cannot establish but which comes from you, a willing heart to be open, a willing hand to grasp and to give, not to strike and hold back. We pray for peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we bring this year to a close, this church year to a close, we thank you for the privilege of following Christ. And we look forward in the coming church year with Advent to a true expectation for what the Christ child will do in our living, the following that we will do in the coming year, the serving and the grace we will receive. Bless us and open us to your grace. And may all that we do be a blessing to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we gather these prayers and concerns together, those spoken by our lips and those only written on our hearts and those known only to you. We gather them together and in a time of silence, we offer them to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we lift our voices and join together in praying as Jesus taught us using language that touches our souls. As we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As the ushers come forward, I want to remind all of you that there are many ways to give, both online and in person, in the offering plate as it is passed through mail into the church office or into the slot in the door. You can bring it by the office. If you've not filled out your pledge card, I want to encourage you to do that. We are still taking them. They are still coming in. Through pledging, you bless us with an understanding of what we will have to serve and to give others. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for your gifts. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for the privilege of following Jesus. And now we return to you through the privilege we have received, a portion of what we have received. Use it for the work of your ministry. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen.
Our closing hymn is number 715, Rejoice the Lord is King, number 715. following worship, we will be having our hanging of the greens, a time to decorate the church for Advent and Christmas. First, we have food downstairs. I think you can smell it. I certainly can. It's making me very hungry. There's uh, several kinds of soup. I understand there's taco soup. So come on downstairs and have a bite to eat. And then we will work together to beautify and decorate our church for Advent and Christmas. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for the blessings the privilege we have received of following Jesus. Bless us now as we serve. Bless us now as we go forth. Bless us now as we give your grace to all. And may the grace and the peace and the light and the love of God the Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless us and keep us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.